So what we've got going on here today is we're going to take this motor, which is a Singer sewing machine motor, and we're going to replace this. This is a uh, 120 volt motor with a clutch, and we're going to replace it with this DC motor and this variable speed controller. And that actually goes on this big darn industrial sewing machine. That's what our project is going to be. So the next endeavor with this was to try to figure out exactly where this motor was going to go. So what I've done here is I've taken a couple of cam lock straps. Let's see how those work. And suspended the motor up underneath so you can see how it moves so I figure it's about a two inch gap and I'm gonna put a piece of two inch unistrut right in there and then bolt it to the unistrut my belt should be fairly aligned right now my belt is fairly tight and with the unistrut I'll be able to adjust it back and put wedges underneath that if I need to actually tighten the belt even further. Anyway, that's what we've got going on. So far, we'll go to the next step here in a second. All right, so what we're doing next is we're going to attach this uh, with these small lag bolts, these uh, one inch lag bolts, holding the unistrut down. I actually notched, where'd it go, there we go, I notched this one out so it will fit over this gusset or this support, It'll fit kind of like that, kind of like that, we're going to attach those and then we're going to attach the motor, alright, be right back. So here I mounted it, after uh, putting it on I decided that I was going to go ahead and epoxy it on. Uh, this is the epoxy I use, Devcon Titanium Putty. I use this stuff for everything. It's kind of expensive, but man, if you want it to, if you want something to stick, this is what you put it on there with. Those, yeah, never coming off. Anyway, getting ready for next step. All right, here we have the motor mounted. You can see I've got those things anchored down, glued them in place, bolted the motor on. Next thing I'm going to do is flip this whole mess upside down, put the machine on it, and line up the belt and see uh, what kind of tension thing I got going on. Anyway, be right back. Here we go. We've got this part of it done that I have the machine, the motor, and I've got the controller sitting up there just so we can try it to make it work. I still have to hook the pedal up. That's a whole different that's a complete different uh, video from this. But here, we'll turn it on. So, as a matter of fact, well, see, we, I get power. Come on. Ah! There's the power. So now I've got power on the darn thing. And. Speed it up. Oh, that's smooth. That is very smooth. There we go. That's perfect. All right. Uh, the next part is going to be hooking up a uh, something from the pedal to the knob, and then that'll be that. So this part of the test is just showing that it's going to actually feed material. So we'll load it up. Arm down. Power's on. And oh, there it goes. Oh.
There we go. Successful test. All right, here we are back with the sewing machine conversion. And what our project is going to be today is we're going to hook up the foot pedal to the knob. So we're going to go from linear motion with this linkage and that foot pedal. Oh, there it is, foot pedal. Linear motion to rotary motion. We're going to hook this linkage to this cog belt to that knob. Get ready. Here we go. All right, so what we're doing, we have taken the knob off of the potentiometer and we've got it disconnected from the control box. And what we're going to do is we're going to snip these wires about there. So now when I go to when I go to reattach this, I'm going to know which color they go to because I left the color on there. Anyway, headset screws on this. We'll put those back on when we're done. So essentially, this is going to fit into that. We're going to have a bracket that that goes to, a shaft that goes all the way through, basically this and this. Kind of something like that with a bearing on either side. One here, one here. Our belt will be attached to this linkage, to the pedal, thereby spinning this, spinning this, spinning the knob, and turning linear motion into rotary motion. Anyway, now we're going to draw a little picture and come up with uh, the kind of bracket that we're going to use. All right, here's what we came up with. Is something that looks kind of like that. The potentiometer will fit in this end. Then this will fit in the middle. The shaft will go all the way through. We'll go through this also. Something like that. That'll fit in there. We'll stick a couple of bearings in here. Oh, not on that end. Put one here. I'll actually put them inside facing out. Inside facing out. Inside facing out. And we found this piece of scrap UHMW. Ultra high molecular weight. Just a chunk of plastic. But I think I can carve that out. Sure, that'll fit in there. That's just about the right size. So we're going to cut this up and make it look like that. All right, here we go. Okay, so here's where we're at. We carved this thing out. We could have used pretty much anything to carve it, but I used the mill. Sliced it, I put bearings in my two sockets there. And let's see, it's going to end up looking something like... That goes there. That kind of goes there. That fits in there. This, whoa, am I out of, out of view? That's going to sit in there. And then a shaft is going to join it all together. Get in there. That goes through there, through there, through there. And then I end up with this. Then we're going to have the belt on there. And that's going to be attached to the linkage over there. And it's going to do something like that once everything's locked down. Sound like a plan? I think we can do it. Okay. All right, so this is what I ended up with. There it is. So after I slice this, then I'll, whoa, look out now. I'll attach dog on it. Well, anyway, I'll attach the cog belt to the linkage, attach this to the bottom of the deck, and then hook the linkage up to the pedal, and then uh, it'll work like that. Right on? There we go. 
Oh, also, uh, I'm going to post this in the forum for making throttle switches for scooters. That this is also a good way of turning your throttle motion into uh, rotary motion also. So I use this same concept on uh, some of the scooters I've got, the little electric scooters. All right, there we go. And this ends up being what it looks like when it's mounted. I'm going to back up a little bit so you can... But there's your linear motion. I got the, this up here. I can still see you. <laughs> Everybody else is going to see you too. I'm going to post this on YouTube, honey. How dare you? But that's it. Now we're going to flip it over and hook the sewing machine back up to it and see if it works. There you go.